Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the full moon in Scorpio at four degrees, 17 minutes on April 23, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, galactic points and celestial bodies to the Western tropical astrology wheel. So many of us are interested in raising consciousness here on Earth. And one way of doing that is to start to relating to ourselves as multidimensional. Galactic astrology is a tool to help us start to relate to our multidimensional soul journey beyond this solar system. I'm so happy you're here. And first, I want to also say, Thank you. Thank you for everyone that found this channel during the Eclipse portal. And an extra shout out to Molly, who gave me the spotlight and sent so many of you to my channel. So thank you for being here. I'm so happy that you are here. Here in this video, you'll receive three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the full moon chart. And also at the end, I'll give you three questions to work with should you want to integrate this full moon energy some more. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. The full moon at four degrees of Scorpio is conjunct the Shapley attractor at two degrees of Scorpio, but also the fixed star Surma. Surma is in the Virgo constellation. And we're going to talk about Surma some more in the first theme coming up. The ruler of this full moon is Pluto at two degrees of Aquarius, conjunct Aquila Altair. And Pluto is playing a central role in the transformation that we're going through, especially during this time. Pluto is in a square to the full moon. So there is a powerful T-square here between the sun and the moon opposite each other and Pluto at two degrees of Aquarius. This full moon is taking place in the first deacon at four degrees. The first 10 degrees of each sign is considered the first deacon and is related to the physical realm. And I've noticed that the next two full moons, including this one, the next full moon in Sagittarius in May and the next full moon after that is in Capricorn in June. So by the end of June, that's when we are going to shift into having full moons in the third deacon, which is the last 10 degrees of each sign. So that's an interesting shift. And the way I interpret this uh, period of time between now and end of June, let's say, is a time of release. And we may see a lot of um, evidence of release in the physical realm, in the first deacon, since uh, after that, it's going to all take place in the next full moons, so to say, in the third deacon, which is associated with the spiritual realm. So that's just a little observation that I did. And so this full moon is a loud roar on the heels of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. There, it's not a question about that this is getting real. It's this feeling of getting ready for the inevitable. And part of it is uh, inevitable awakening, inevitable uh, crossroad that we have to face. And that could be translate it into some area of your life that may be uh, something that is coming up to the surface here to for a decision and a door is opening a new potential is opening a, a direction a change of direction is taken so here at this time it it's a momentum that is big part of a bigger plan it's part of a bigger scenario that we may not always see because in the first deacon, it is very uh, physical. It is very much in front of us, in our faces, in the material world. But knowing that come end of June, it will be about 
our connection to uh, the spiritual world that will be in the forefront for the rest of the year, at least from a full moon perspective. So now it, it is to um, consider what is in front of us. What are the things that are coming in from the sidelines that we need to consider? Uh, because here we are deciding our next direction. And there is so much at, in this full moon that is speaking to that there is a new earth energy coming in and that there is full support for the new potentials, the new openings, the new opportunities for us. And uh, I'll walk you through that more in uh, theme three. So before we go into taking a look at the full moon chart, I'd like to share what the themes are for this full moon. And also I have a little separate bonus section regarding the Jupiter Uranus conjunction as well as part of this video. So I'll start with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and a little bonus theme that I've called a second eclipse portal. The first theme I've called the inevitable breakthrough. And here we're going to talk about Surma, the fixed star Surma, and also the, all the galactic points that are activated so powerfully at this time. The second theme I've called a multidimensional crossroad. And here we're going to talk about asteroid Hecate and also the role of the fixed star Beta Centauri Hadar at this full moon. Third theme I've called manifestation of a future vision. And here we're going to talk about all the new earth energy that I see in this chart, but also a fire trine, an earth trine that are so pivotal to this full moon, providing both stability, but also inspiration. So we'll go through that in theme three. All right. Are you ready for the full moon chart? Let's go. So here we have the full moon chart. And what you'll notice, the moon there at four degrees of Scorpio is conjunct Haumea at one degree of Scorpio. And this is a powerful signature of new earth energy right there. But we also have the moon then conjunct Virgo Surma at four degrees, almost exact at four degrees of Scorpio, and also the Shapley attractor at two degrees of Scorpio. So this, this is a powerful combination, and we'll talk about that in, in theme one. Also, this full moon is squaring Pluto, and Pluto is at two degrees of Aquarius now, uh, conjunct still Aquila Altair. And also the full moon is trining uh, Fomalhaut at four degrees of Pisces. And we have a lot to review in this video. So I'll start with the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and that little bonus theme of a second uh, eclipse portal. So the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is a one-in-a-lifetime conjunction in Taurus here and is happening on April 20th at 21 degrees 50 minutes in Taurus. And I've highlighted it here in green. This is still the full moon chart, but one thing I wanted to point out here is that the transiting moon will be traveling across the sign of Libra during this time between the 20th and the 23rd. So on the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction day, the moon will be at 29 degrees of Virgo. And the time that uh, is happening then between uh, the conjunction and the full moon uh, is going to be about three days. So during that time, the moon will transit the sign of Libra and proceed into Scorpio to four degrees. Now, I wanted to take a look at what is it really that is going to be highlighted by the moon's transit again? Well, it is the eclipse portal, <laughs> basically. So the moon, first of all, will activate the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra again and also will transit uh, Virgo, Surma, and Shapley Attractor as part of the full moon energy. And if we look at opposite the moon, 
uh, everything that's currently in Aries will be activated by the opposition of the moon again. So what we have here is the North Node, we have Mercury, we have Venus, we have Chiron. This whole theme from the eclipse portal is getting activated again. That's very interesting to me. So it is really a, a second eclipse portal that's going on. Now, from a galactic perspective, this is also going to activate the T-square to the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And currently here, Cirrus is here exactly at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And the way I translate that is that now this second go around of this eclipse portal, Cirrus is uh, ensuring that we can reap the harvest from all the work that we have done and realized during the first eclipse portal and is infusing uh, perspective of abundance, perspective of prosperity and uh is laying out for us that it's time to harvest and move on and make the decisions that will actually support us in the future. The transiting moon will also be in opposition to alpha reticulum at six degrees of Aries and also Andromeda Alparas at 14 degrees of Aries. And both of those fixed stars are associated with futuristic um, perspective. Reticulum basically is a futuristic uh, vision of a future human that I see many of us are bringing here. Um, energy from the future are getting activated. But also Andromeda Alparats, which Andromeda Alparats is associated with the need, the urge to free ourselves from limitations, but also allowing ourselves to live independently and enjoying our life. So this combination of reticulum and Andromeda Alparats activated is reminding us of those potentials that we now have a second go around to consider. And going back to Lyra Ring Nebula at 20 degrees of Capricorn in T-square with this second eclipse portal is that reminder of our soul memories around karma, uh, around polarization, and uh, all the things that we are working so hard to release at this time. I also want to point out that the Lyra Ring Nebula is in almost exact square to Venus and Chiron now at 20 degrees of, of Aries. Yes. So this is also the uh, reminder of those wounds that we now are infusing with Venus's energy. So even if we have a huge highlight on Taurus and Scorpio at this time, we are getting a second go around of this eclipse portal uh, on the Aries Libra axis at this time, a couple of days before this full moon. So uh, this is super powerful revisiting of energy uh, all the way from the eclipse portal. All right, so let's take a look at the first theme of this full moon in Scorpio. Next. So here we have the first theme that I've called the inevitable breakthrough. And in this theme, I'm going to highlight, of course, the full moon's conjunction to Shapley Attractor and the fixed star Surma, uh, but also the number of galactic points that are activated at this time. And galactic points, I mean the black holes that are centers for universal wisdom that are activated and driving multiple, multiple galaxies uh, at various magnitude. So here we have Surma in the Virgo constellation. And on the sky map there, you can see I've highlighted Surma in pink. And also above me here is a image created by Aria Loomis. And tune into the beautiful Surma here. The Surma energy is associated with isolation, but also the desire to have deeper connections, whether it's with experiences or relationships. 
And Surma is specifically also associated with wanting to shed old skin, establish new boundaries. Uh, so this is the archetypal energy that is associated with this full moon. And this release that is happening now under influence of Surma is enabling us to move forward. It's a release, uh, taking something off of our shoulders to be able to move forward. So in addition to the trine from the full moon to Fomalhaut there in Pisces and the square to Pluto, the ruler of this full moon at two degrees of Aquarius and Aquila Altair, I want to highlight some of these uh, aspects to the galactic points to help us understand the magnitude of the momentum of this release that we're asked to do. So first, the most obvious is the conjunction of the Shapley attractor to this full moon, highlighting the immense momentum and support that we currently have for release and transformation. But this may happen very much in the background and see it as your galactic families, our soul families, our guides, uh, uh, and all the universal wisdom that our uh, ancestors are representing are supporting us at this time through the momentum that this conjunction to the Shapley attractor is providing us. Now, we also have uh, a number of interactions with galactic points at this full moon. And if we start with the next one, which would be Mars, Mars there at 24 degrees of Pisces is now in square with the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. And this square is clearly an ask for us in the Milky Way galaxy. Galactic center is our own black hole driving our own solar system or our, soul, our own uh, you know, neighborhood here. And Mars in square with the galactic center is a call for action. It's a call to grow out of the limitations that we place on ourselves. So Mars has a re really key role here traversing uh, the last degrees of Pisces in helping and the galactic center connection there uh, in, in creating this momentum. And next we have Mercury retrograde. It conjunct the North Node, trining the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. What does this mean? The great attractor is uh, associated with inclusion and allowing others to feel a belonging. And Mercury retrograde conjunct the North Node here in Aries is uh, to tune into our soul family, to tune into our guides, to feel that belonging. And there's a favorable energy uh, at this full moon to do just that. And then we have the long-term influence, first represented by Saturn in Pisces here, squaring the great attractor. So there is a lesson here of inclusion to move more towards uh, an energy of equality. And uh, Saturn is making sure here that we are working with the great attractor at this full moon to help uh, even the playing field, if you will, as much as we can and learn from those lessons. And then we have Neptune's long-term guidance through the opposition with the supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra and the square to the galactic center at 27 degrees of Sagittarius. This has been in place for quite a while now. And lastly, Pluto's, who is the Pluto's influence, who's the ruler of this full moon, uh, in trine with the supergalactic center, but also in square then with the full moon and the Shapley attractor. So all of this is just highlighting the importance of the momentum that we're feeling, which can feel like restlessness, that something is coming, that we are really ready to burst out uh, in terms of a new direction, uh, a new decision, a new perspective. 
So this is uh, very much where we feel uh, that momentum coming from. And with the Uranus-Jupiter conjunction kind of coming in right in the mix, right before this full moon to activate uh, significant energies, this theme is really highlighting the momentum that is now activated primarily with this full moon conjunct the Shapley attractor, which is a huge activation point for all the other uh, aspects to galactic points that have either been there for a while or really long time. This is a true highlight of the universal support and momentum that uh, is in motion right now. So next, let's take a look at the second theme. So here we have the second theme that I've called a multidimensional crossroad. And we start with Jupiter and Uranus there in Taurus at 21 and 22 degrees, opposite the Centaurus constellation and the fixed star Beta Centauri Hadar at 24 degrees of Scorpio. And Hadar is associated with unconditional love an utopian uh, sense of harmony and ease and flow. And this is an invitation to integrate a perspective of unconditional love at this time, as opposed to a perspective of, let's say, fear. And this theme is really highlighted by the asteroid Hecate at 23 degrees of Leo. Hecate is the triple goddess. And in Leo, it is certainly a, a alignment with the heart. Leo, uh, that comes from courage, the heart, and uh, Hecate is really the, um, the, the master, if you will, to tra traverse the unseen versus the seen. And Hecate is the triple goddess. She is the all-seeing uh, master of the liminal space, seeing 360 through all paths, all possibilities, both in the seen and the unseen. So there is no coincidence here that Hecate is making a T-square to the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction and also the fixed star Hadar at this time. So here you can see uh, Beta Centauri on the sky map, but also the powerful image of Hecate. And look at the fire in her hands there and uh, really lit up as far as her uh, seeing cap capability, seeing every single possibility and path that is available at this time. So here we have a T-square that is representing energy of being connected to the seen and the unseen, based in the heart, applying love, but also this once-in-a-lifetime energy of expansion and connection to the cosmos, galactic information. This T-square is part of that opportunity for growth that we are presented with now at this full moon. So we also have a trine, a really important trine here between Venus and Hecate. Venus at 23 degrees of Aries and trine there to Hecate at 23 degrees of Leo. This is the flowing feminine, divine feminine guidance that is provided now. And it's a clear message to anchor our perspective in love, in uh, our heart, in allowing that multidimensional uh, perspective to that has come in also through the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction to be a, a part of a crossroad in our lives. This Jupiter-Uranus conjunction uh, is one in a lifetime. And Hecate is also associated with standing there in the crossroad. And that's exactly where we are. What is our choice? Are we going to anchor this time and our way forward in love? Are we going to be guided by our intuition, our heart, and all the new potentialities, potentials, opportunities that have been opening up through the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction energy that 
in many ways, Hecate is that way shower um, in our process between dark and light, uh, conscious and unconscious, past, present, and future. So we are invited to take a bigger perspective. Uh, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is the infusion of galactic wisdom uh, expanded into our reality here. Yeah, this is a huge opportunity for us to uh, infuse more self-love in our lives, to live from our heart. So let's take a look at the third and last theme now. So here we have the third theme that I've called manifestation of a future vision. And in this theme, I'm going to highlight two trines, one earth trine and one fire trine, and also the presence of new earth energy in this full moon chart. So we start with the earth trine here uh, from Jupiter Uranus conjunction to true Lilith at 22 degrees of Virgo. And then we have another trine to Ceres at 20 degrees of Capricorn conjunct the Lyra ring nebula. And if I look at this trine and the energy that's flowing here, it's uh, an energy of uh, abundance under uh authentic uh, expression, if you will. And this trine is super powerful, not only to help release karma that we have uh, available to us to release at this time. Lilith here is telling us to step out in the unknown, knowing that we are supported. The abundance and support from uh, series here to really harvest. Uh, it's harvest time in terms of releasing that karma so that we can move on. And especially for the infusion that has happened here at this full moon by the Jupiter Uranus conjunction three, day, three days before is going to set this trine in motion in a very uh, harmonious way. And then to add to this, we have a fire trine. And here I have pulled in the trine in the first deacon uh, around six, seven degrees, which is one of, if we start with Pallas Athene here at six degrees of Sagittarius, trining Varuna at six degrees of Leo and trining uh, Alpha Reticulum at six de seven degrees of Aries. Now, this is a futuristic energy. Um, Varuna is this uh, energy of a uh, higher octave of Saturn, actually. Varuna is associated with energy around self-mastery and allowing that uh, to come through, not in a repressive way, but actually in an expansive way. And at six degrees of Leo here, this is from the heart. Pallas Athene is also in a fire sign at six degrees of uh, Sagittarius. And she, as you may know, is the spiritual warrior, but from a feminine perspective, not using action force to uh, master her warrior energy, but rather from negotiation. And she is also influenced by the futuristic energy from Alpha Reticulum here at six degrees of Aries. So this fire trine is part of this new earth energy that is coming in. And so here we have the two trines overlaid uh, on top of each other and earth and fire, as you know, is, is super powerful, but there's more. So here we have uh, a number of alignments that I see are in support of a future vision at this time. And often I speak of new earth energy in association with the Kuiper belt objects, which are far way, way out there beyond Neptune's orbit. And uh, what I noticed here is that many of them are in the very early degrees of respective signs. And at this full moon, this early degree first deacon pattern is very much highlighted. 
So in addition to the sun and the moon here at four degrees in respective signs, also the ruler of this full moon, uh, Pluto there at two degrees, we also have a number of others in, in early degrees. So I'll walk you through what I see here. We have Varuna that I mentioned earlier at six degrees of Leo being that higher octave of Saturn, bringing in self mastery of uh, more of a, a focus on that authentic self mastery and uh, enlightenment, if you will. We have Juno at six degrees of Virgo. Juno is that uh, energy around commitment and devotion, which is also a uh, suggested energy to pick up here in the future and, and lean on. We have Palisathene at six degrees of Sagittarius. And here, of course, she's the visionary, the, the visionary female sp spiritual warrior, uh, and she is enjoying it there in Sagittarius. We have Ixion, which is part of the Kuiper Belt objects, uh, at five degrees of Capricorn. Ixion is one of the brothers to Pluto, uh, but Ixion is focused more on uh, authentic leadership uh, and transformation. In, in, in Capricorn here, it is to ease up the structures uh, and expectations that we may have uh, around what is authentic leadership. So Ixion is, is doing a great job here, I feel, to, to bring in that focus on authenticity. And then we have Gong Gong uh, at five degrees of Pisces. Gong Gong is that energy that is a mix, a combination of Mars and, and Venus together. So it is that focus on empathic connections, uh, the, the higher connection, if you will, uh, even uh, around telepathy and uh, nonverbal communication, I would say as well. And then we have reticulum I wanted to highlight again is six, seven degrees of Aries, which is very much representing energy around the future human. And also hiatus up there at six degrees of Gemini, which is, uh, which we've talked about a lot in previous videos, but Hiatus represent this energy of creativity and infusion of passion. We also have, uh, lastly, Vesta at seven degrees of Cancer, conjunct Sirius B. And Vesta is that focus on the inner spark. And in Cancer, it certainly is that inner spark within, right? And Sirius B is influ influencing this alignment with the focus on mastery and teaching, so uh, it's suggesting to us as part of this future vision is to be anchored in an inner passion, inner spark, as we go on and teach and share things uh, with others. So this was a very quick review of what I see. But uh, the main message here is like all of these alignments are in the first deacon along with the full moon at this time. So there is support for a future vision present at this full moon. So there we go. Uh, this was the reading for the Scorpio full moon and a little sprinkle of the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. And we talked about the moon's activation as second go around of the eclipse portal, basically in the Aries Libra axis between the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and this full moon that may be worth paying attention to and tuning into. And the first theme was the inevitable breakthrough with the focus on Virgo Surma here that allows us to uh, utilize this huge momentum uh, with the activation of the galactic points at this full moon, but also utilizing Surma's energy around shedding old skin, shedding old patterns at this time and release them. And then we have theme two that was the multidimensional crossroad with the highlight of Hecate, the asteroid that can see uh, 360 through the unseen and the seen, the dark and light and conscious, unconscious and also the guidance here to lean on and integrate unconditional love through the influence of uh, Bera Centauri Hadar at this time.
And then we had the theme three, where a manifestation of a future vision is welcome. <laughs> we have all these alignments of Kuiper Belt objects and other asteroids, powerful uh, influences at this time at very early degrees, along with the full moon at four degrees, all of them in, in the first deacon. So this is a powerful time and a lot in motion with powerful energies uh, allowing us to move towards a future vision, a future new earth that is available to us. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to integrate this full moon energy some more? The first question is, what area of your life is magnified right now? What is it that you want to have a breakthrough within? Maybe it is a part of your life that you have been waiting for a door to be opened. Maybe it's something that you want to make a decision on and that is so magnified that you can't miss it at this time. What is that? The second question is, where in your life are you feeling a crossroad at this time? And where in your life do you need to lean on your heart more? Because this influence of Hecate is powerful and she wants you to stand empowered in whatever decision you are making, whatever uh, is highlighted for you at this full moon. How can you lean on infusing your situation with more self-love in a new way? The third question is, what is your future vision for yourself, for your family, for your community? This is a powerful question that may take some time to sit and contemplate, but it's worth envisioning now. What is that future vision that you want to create and be in? Now is the time to really make that um, come alive. Thank you again for being with me here uh, through this reading for the full moon in Scorpio. I love doing these readings for you. And thank you again for being here. Are you, are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the description box below. So again, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening and watching to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach. And come visit me on my website, ulrikasullivan.com. Like and subscribe this video, share it with others, and enjoy this powerful time we're in. And I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.